what that means is that the oxygen around us would like to react with all organic matter, including us, to make carbon dioxide and uh, water, right? Um, but happily, it does not. And the reason it does not is because it's in that triplet state. That triplet state is, uh, from a certain point of view, forbidden to react with organic molecules under normal conditions. Okay? However, the porphyrins create a new type of oxygen that we call singlet oxygen when you shine light on them. And that singlet oxygen no longer has that barrier. Okay, and so singlet oxygen has the ability to immediately react and burn any material that it comes into very, very fast. So the idea would be that if we shine light on these porphyrins, they absorb it, they generate huge amounts of this singlet oxygen, and then in that local region, it will just burn holes in things. And if this had been bound to these cells, as I'm showing in this example over here, that ought to kill the cells by literally punching holes in the membranes. And so um, we did some experiments to show we can uh, get a lot of single oxygen generated by these capsids. Uh, it's about 300,000 equivalents in 20 minutes. Uh, we do this in practice with a blue LED lamp we actually bought on Amazon. Um, so it's just a little, little normal lamp that has blue LEDs on it. Um, that powers up the porphyrins, and so um, this generates all this single oxygen in their local vicinity. So I call these death stars, OK? Um, so if you look at how this works, if you treat this with the uh, uh, Jercat cells, what you can see is that um, after 20 minutes, 75% of those cells are now dead above the control just by shining the light on the sample. Um, if you look at the controls, like scrambling the DNA and so forth, you see no activity above the background. And the most important experiment is here. These U266 cells don't have the protein that we're recognizing with the DNA strand on the outside surface, and these cells are immune to this uh, activity. So um, why use this method? There are many drugs that we could have chosen, and we are interested in several different uh, cancer drugs for, for these types of, of treatments. But the reason we thought this one would be interesting is that people calculate in the literature that singlet oxygen is so incredibly reactive that it can only go about 100 nanometers or so, and it 